Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use sprite skinning to get some simple 2D animation out of your player character, like in the game that I'm showing you right now. Alright, so the first thing I have open is a sample scene um, where we have some coins we can collect. That was our last tutorial. And our player character is currently this box, but I brought over the art from that game I showed you, and I will show you how we can set this up to use sprite skinning so we can make some simple 2D player animation. The first thing we will want to do is select our player art, and I'm changing the pixels per unit because each of these uh, squares that contains a piece of the player is 128 by 128, and uh, that'll make it so the image looks a little better. Filter mode, I'm setting to point no filter since it is pixel art. And I will go ahead and apply that. Then you'll want to open the sprite editor. Go over here to this drop down and select skinning editor. And in here, I'm going to click the visibility tool. This will show us uh, a list of the bones that we will create for our player. And I will create our first bone on our body of the player. To do this, I'm just clicking with the left mouse button, dragging the mouse up, and clicking with the left mouse button again. And you'll notice that it'll create a second bone here. Uh, when you get that, you'll just wanna click the right mouse button to uh, detach that. And you can do the same thing for these limbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now, as you can see, under this visibility window, we have all of the bones we just created. So if you click on the names of them, you can rename them. So I'm going to do that. The next thing I want to do is I can drag the arms and legs of our player so it is so they are parented to the body and that way if the body moves then so do the arms and the legs after that we will want to set the depth of each piece um, this helps for sorting which order like if this arm comes in front of the body we'll want it to be higher so we'll set the depth to two this arm will be behind the body of the player so it'll be negative two and then the same thing is for the legs, which I will set to one and negative one. And the reason why I did two for the arms and one for the legs is because if they were the same value, they would overlap each other and cause some weird clipping issues. So by setting it to two and negative two and one and negative one, we avoid that issue. All right, so after we have this all set up, the next thing we'll wanna do is click on auto geometry. And down here under geometry, you can see outline detail, alpha tolerance, subdivide, and weights. Uh, you can adjust these however you like. Um, I typically just leave it on the default since I have simple pixel art. And uh, once you have those set to how you like them, you can click generate for selected. And you'll see that a mesh appears around your individual sprites. And that kind of just shows you um, the area of which this bone will be able to affect uh, the sprite. So all of our pieces are covered, so I think we're good. And we can go ahead and we can go ahead and click apply to save our changes. And we can close the sprite editor. All right, with that set up, we can go ahead and go to our player in the scene. I'm just going to disable our current sprite and I will add a new game object which I will call sprite skin and I'm going to add a sprite skin component 
And what this does is it'll add a sprite renderer and a sprite skin component. Uh, in the sprite renderer, you'll just want to set it to your player art. And you can see in our game view, we have our uh, player pieces. And under sprite skin, you can see we have our body arm one, arm two, leg one, leg two. And we can just go ahead and click on create bones. And that will uh, create the individual transforms for our pieces here. So you can see in our hierarchy, we now have under our sprite skin, we have a body piece and arm and leg pieces that correspond to the individual pieces of the sprite. And in our scene view, you can now see we have these little arrows that allow us to rotate the individual pieces. When we rotate the body, you'll notice all the other pieces rotate. Rotate the arms, they rotate individually. Same thing for the legs. And what I like to do here is I like to arrange stuff uh, as it should look in like the idle animation. So it looks like that in our scene view. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now that we got uh, all the pieces aligned, I'm just going to zero out this body position and I'm going to set the Y to like 0.5. Um, that helps with the uh, little animation we're gonna do here in a second. And then also the rotation will need to be set to 90 so we are upright. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn off this box collider and I will add a capsule collider 2D so it fits our player a little better. And I'm just going to adjust these values. And I will actually move the collider so it is a child of the body. So whenever the body changes or squishes, so does the collider. Right, that looks okay to me. And the next thing we'll want to do is go to our player game object and add an animator component. Then we can go to our animation tab and I will just create a simple player idle animation. Now if we go into our scene and we hit play, we can see that our player has a little bit of a uh, squish in the Y axis uh, when it's idle. However, when we move around, uh, we can see we don't have any other animation set up. And I also have, in effect, this platformer player movement script. Uh, I added a little function where depending on which direction we're going, uh, we flip the sprite component uh, along the horizontal axis. So that's why it's looking back and forth depending on which way I'm moving. Another thing I'll have to adjust is uh, these lines right here, they're raycast so I can detect whether we're on the ground or if we can wall slide. So I'm gonna do, go ahead and do that real quick. All right, now that we have our simple player movement set up, I'm gonna go ahead and add a running animation for our player. To do this, I'm gonna select our player, go to the animation window and create a new clip. And I will call it player running. First thing I'm gonna do is add our little bouncing animation that we have in our idle so that stays consistent next thing I want to do is right here on the first frame I'm going to 
adjust our arms and our legs so it looks like we're starting to run. I'll go another portion of the way into the animation. And our arms should cross. I think so should our legs. And it's really just uh, adjusting it to how you would like your animation to be played. So now if I go here, copy that. And it's generally a good rule of thumb to have your first frame and last frame of your animations uh, to be the same. That way when it loops, it looks good. So let's just take a quick look at how our animation is work is looking. So it's not that great right now, but uh, like I said, you can easily tweak this to look how you want it. I think that's okay for our purposes today. So I'm going to go ahead and run with it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add our animator window and select our player. And I'm just going to go ahead and add not a layer. I'm going to add a parameter that is a bool and I'm going to call it is running. I'm going to make a couple transitions here between the player running animation and the idle animation. And I'm taking away the exit time and the transition duration. I'm setting to zero, so it's an instant change. The condition I have is is running needs to be true if you're going from idle to running. And on the transition from running to idle is running needs to be false. I'm going to go ahead and save this and I will go back and I'm going to open our platformer player movement script. And inside of here, I already commented out some code for the animator. So up top, we're going to set a variable for a private animator called animator. In our awake function, we're going to say animator is equal to get component animator. That'll just grab the animator component off of our player game object. And under the set animation function, I am just uncommenting this, where if our rigid body's velocity in the horizontal direction is greater than zero, then our running animation will be set to true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. And in our update function, I have our set animation here right after our jump and movement. So if I save this and go back to our game, I can go ahead and click play. And now we should have our running animation. And to clean up the running animation a little bit uh, so you don't notice how janky it is. I'm just going to highlight all of our keyframes and reduce it down by maybe a quarter or so. That way it looks like we're moving a little faster. Now it looks a little weird to have us running while we're on the wall, so we can go ahead and add a wall sliding animation. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so I went ahead and added a simple wall sliding animation here. As you can see, it's meant to look like you're holding on to 
the side of the wall. And then in the animator, I just set up the state here with a couple transitions with the new parameter is wall sliding, where from idle to wall sliding is wall sliding needs to be true. To go from wall sliding to idle is running needs to be false and is wall sliding needs to be false and vice versa for when the player is running and transitioning between wall sliding and running. Going back to our player, we can open up our platformer player movement script. And I'm just going to go ahead and go back to our wall sliding section. And I will go ahead and uncomment this code or if we are wall sliding. Also, if you want to see how we're flipping the player, uh, character around based on our movement. This is the flip uh, function. This is the flip function that I'm using. Um, I have a bool set up to see if the player is facing left. By default, at the beginning, it's set to false because the player is always facing right when we start the game. And uh, depending on our input, um, then we will flip the X scale of our local transform. And we will also change the facing left Boolean value. And then I also just called the flip function inside of our movement. So if we save that and go back to our game, we should now see if our wall sliding works. It does, however, we are flipped around. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that real quick. And to fix that, I'm just going in here and I'm going to change the scale of the sprite skin to negative one at the beginning of the animation. And at the end, and I will also need to set it in the middle So for something simple like this, we can manually go in and set it to negative one. Um, if it's a more complex animation, I might just start over. Uh, really just depends on the situation. But now we are sliding facing the other way. So let's go ahead and give that a try. I'm gonna turn off our gizmo so it looks a little better. So we're running correctly. We can jump and we are sliding down the walls facing the correct way. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like and a comment telling me what I should do next. Um, if you want to view any of the other tutorials that I've done leading up to this, there should be a playlist linked somewhere on the screen. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.